Hi everyone, last week we discussed how you can create unlimited AI photos of yourself. For fine tuning, we used Flux1 dev model. Actually, on the day I published the video, Black Forest Labs released Flux1 Pro fine tuning. For those who don't know, that is their flagship model that generates much more realistic images. So today, I decided to give it a try. However, instead, we are going to fine tune a model on our imaginary product. The general idea is to show you how you can generate unlimited content for your brand new product with AI. And by the way, this statute here today is not by chance. This is going to be our imaginary product that we're going to use to fine tune a model. Stick around because I will also show you how you can quickly create a reel for your video using AI generated photos from Flux combined with Kling AI to generate video footage of your product. No expensive equipment, no need to spend hours editing and so easy setup. Let's see how that works. All right, so the, for the fine tuning of Flux1 Pro model, again, we're gonna be using fall.ai service. And luckily enough, the framework is already here. So let's just go to fall.ai. And once again, if you don't have an account, you have to sign up with your GitHub. You know, if you don't have a GitHub account, you have to create one. I do have an account already. So once you are in, you will see the homepage. And in order to find that model, you will go to explore. And then you will go, once again, you will go to training. So once you hit training, the new model that will show up here right now is Flux Pro Trainer for fine tuning. So the setup here is pretty straightforward as before. We have to have from 5 to 20 actually pictures of our product. We have to upload a zip file or upload the photo straight here. We'll have the fine tune comment. We have to trigger words and then we have a couple other things that I'm, we're going to go through. But first of all, we have to get our photos prepared. Luckily enough, I've done it already. As I mentioned before, we're going to be using this statute as our brand new product. So what I actually did, I took my phone and uh, took a few photos of this statute that are going to be used for the training. One important thing for the product, photos should actually not be the same in the same environment. Like, for example, let me show you the photos that I have. For example, here are different pictures. So this would be the picture on a table. Then I have a picture in front of my, my screen. Then I have a picture somewhere else. The key idea is that you make a photo of your product in different environments. They might not be perfect. So as you can see here, those are literally just pictures with my phone of the product and they don't have any editing on them, etc., etc. The main idea is that those pictures have different backgrounds because essentially when the model is going to be training, it's going to be recalling the basically the similarities of the pictures. The key thing is that the only thing that is consistent between those pictures should be your product and the background and environment should be different. If we have the same thing, repeat it multiple times it will just try to recall that from the training so once again um i have provided a trigger word for my product which is going to be prdct which stands for product basically what you're going to do you're going to go and just compress to a zip file all the files i've done it already so what we're going to do we're going to upload this zip file so a picture of product let's just upload it okay we got it so the fine tune comment and you can see here the instructions descriptive note to identify your fine tune since names so here I just went for product test, whatever. The trigger word that is on all the pictures is the same is the product. And just make sure you have the names of all the pictures that include the your trigger word. So basically I went with a picture of my product with all the pictures. So that stays the same so that to inform the model that that's the trigger word we're looking to, to use. So the next one is something new, which is mode. And basically the mode here, you can select whether you're fine tuning the model based on the character, on product, on style or general. So in my case, I'm going to be using the product training, but you can go with the person and that's going to be a character. If you want to go with like the brand style of the brand, so the colors, you will go with the style. General will be like totally something different. You will just go with retraining the model. So the iterations, and this is actually a key thing. So here, the default value is 300, and we, um, we're we going to be using 300 actually as well. But uh, there is a big difference because uh, when we were training the previous model, which was dev model, we were using a thousand iterations. And to be honest, the more iterations you would have, the more expensive it is, but the, more, the better quality it is. So if you really want to use this for business, I suggest you shoot like for a thousand. That would be like, you know, more iteration would make it better recall what's in the pictures and the details. At least what I've done and tested, I have fine-tuned that model on my images. 
and I've selected a character here on 300 iterations and the for Flux 1 Dev model was 1000 iterations and actually the results from Flux 1 Dev were better just because of those hyper parameters. Although, you know, this model is, is better in terms of generating images, Flux 1 Dev gave better results just because it was better recalling how the face uh, looks. So I suggest going for a higher parameter. And we'll get to the coast a little bit later. It's a little bit more expensive than to do the Dev model, but it's all doable. So that's not kind of a hard expense there. So the learning rate, um, by default, you would go from 0 0.0001. You would just leave a default. The next is priority and there is a speed and quality. So the speed is actually is going to train the model a little bit faster and the quality is just going to be doing the better. I would, I would actually select quality over speed. Then there is like this captioning enables disable, disables automatic image captioning. So essentially what this is doing is going to read what, what it does see in the image and we'll try to caption uh, basically what's in the image to the title of that image. Then we have a LoRa rank and I set it to 16. You can go for 32 or higher but you actually don't need for 11 pictures or 20 pictures if you have small data 16 is totally enough you shouldn't be shooting for higher if you have 50 or 100 images you might do 32 but like for smaller sizes 16 is already too much actually some other sources suggested to use 8 but as 16 is a default value i'll just leave it um at 16 and then there is a fine-tune type so there are two things you can do you can fine-tune the whole model so basically the weights of the model will be readjusted and here we are talking about all the weights or we can generate a LoRa. So LoRa is going to not readjust all the weights of the model. It will just use some of the matrices of those weights. So it's just a smaller, smaller part of that that you can put on top of your model with the weights and it will remember the face. If we're going to go for the full model, it's just going to be a better quality overall. If it's going to just use the LoRa, it's going to be faster and it's actually going to be reusable in the other models if you can use your LoRa. So I will go with the full model and here is the cost. So if your request is under 150 iteration, it will cost two bucks. And here we have 300 iterations. So it's going to be like something like four bucks. But if you want to go over 500, it's going to be more than six bucks. And when I trained the model on my face, I think I used something like um, 500 iterations and it still was worse than Flux 1 Dev in terms of recognizing the face. And you would just go and start and you will have the training history started here. And I'm really not going to do it again. It's just, you know, we'll take some time and you will pretty much will get the same output. And let's actually see what we get there. So in order to generate prompt, I suggest we use Claude AI to generate the prompt for us. And let's go with something like generate 10 image prompts for my new brand product. At you agree, God, it is a small statue souvenir and your prompts should always start with product. So that's our keyword. We want it to be in the very beginning of the prompt because it usually tend to weight the words that are at the beginning of the prompt to give it like a more weight general than to the other things so uh, okay so we probably should be more specific on it but let's actually use this prompt and instead of apollo and and that kind of thing let's actually remove that and see how that works the fine-tune strength is actually the same as the laura that we had in our previous example last week and i would suggest going something like with 1.1 it's a different thing, but it's very similar. That's the image size that you can select and a number of inference steps. I will usually go for 50 because we will get the better quality. The guidance scale is basically how much should we rely on our prompt. That's the same as before. Number of images and the safety tolerance that can be accessible via API. In order to create this, the request is going to cost us six cents per one photo. So you can run something like 17 cents per one dollar to generate images, the fine tuned images like this. And let's actually see how that works. OK, so we have an image that sort of looks like the original. So if we look at the original here, you can actually see there is like some golden stuff right there. Golden stuff right there. Of course, um, the only difference is the words in the very on the very bottom. It's actually didn't read the words and that's actually my bad. That's not the best thing to use is to use the product with some sort of words on it because it's not going to replicate that. We might actually avoid this one. I actually don't like this. Let's generate something more interesting. So let's actually attach an image to our prompt and let's ask it to generate 10 prompts of this image. Generate 10 prompts of this image in different environments with different angles. Um, it should start with product. Let's see if that re if it recalls that. It does not recall. So we can go and add it ourselves. And let's actually see how that works. And here we will just use product and let's run it again so that we get a sort of a better image. 
All right, so this uh, generation took us actually 12 point 13 seconds the only question is i mean the quality is really really good i mean it's 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 kind of it, it looks similar um almost the same it's just you know it's a very close shot and uh, i don't understand why we have a close shot here shot from slightly below and that's probably why let's see um the last one how it actually looks different environments the product is placed and can be actually used for you know for other purposes all right so on the last one it went actually a little bit off and then this is because the prompting was not kind of explicitly saying that it's kind of a small thing because here um it generated the product and i mean if we look at this part it actually looks very similar to what we actually have here but the problem is with the size right so you have to prompt it right and actually if you put in your prompt that that's a small souvenir statute or a small statute on a bookshelf or a coffee table or something it will take this into account if you just say go and say hey um this is you know a figure on a carved wooden pedestal and with bridge walls and all that the image looks good but it's actually the product size is off so you have to be specific in your prompting because it just remembers the patterns but it just doesn't remember the size, right? It can generate it big and it can generate it small. We need to make sure it's actually small in the prompting as well. So that it just, just doesn't go off. Okay, I think that's enough for the product imaginary. And um, I can show you a couple other things I've played before uh, just to show you how that actually looks. So there was an image on a, on a table like this. And by the way, the image that is there, I just like it very much, but we have to take into account that it just doesn't generate the tax, right? So here the tax is totally off. And actually in the original one, it's saying uh, copy a tease or something like this. Here it says the product, it tried to actually write the trigger word um, on the image. So we definitely should avoid that. That's how you can generate many, many pictures of your product and uh, use it later to, you know, trying different angles, different environments without actually going and filming that stuff. So another actually cool thing that you can use is basically you can find tune model on your face and on the product as well. And you can ideally use them together. The only difference is that we're not going to be using Flux One Pro for this because it doesn't have the option to actually add a lore right now. And even on their official website, they don't have this option yet. But we have this option for the Flux um, dev model as we've used before. So we have to go to training and then we've got uh, the Flux Lora portrait uh, trainer that we used before for this one. Uh, we would be using Flux Lora Fast Training. So as for the training and fine tuning, again, we're going to use the image data in a zip format. Then we're going to use the trigger word and all that. It's pretty much the same as we use for the portrait uh, training. And I've done it already. And let's actually see an example. So here we need to enter a prompt. And let me go with uh, product, a small statute in, uh, in a nice modern uh, interior design on a coffee table, soft lights, um, whatever that's enough and again the guidance scale is 1.1 and let's do the inference steps to 50 and let's actually run it let's see how that works and this is just to show you that i've trained in on the same product and then we're going to be taking this laura and combining with another laura of my face to see if we can generate the picture of those two together so as you can see here we've got some sort of uh, picture of the product well the quality is a little bit worse than we would get with one flux one pro but that's okay at least we can see that we got the product here and let's actually use this laura and then we go back there was actually this uh, let's get back to this portrait trainer and we may actually use um, one of the trainings for my face. And here there is an option to add another Laura. So what we, you would need to do, you would need to copy paste your Laura path from your product image and copy paste it here. And in order to generate it, and once again, let's uh, quickly double check the instructions. So we got 50 steps. So uh, let's do a little bit more reliance on the prompting. Here it's one or 1.1, definitely not two. Let's do 1.1 for this uh, example. Max and let me go a male with a happy face holding product in his hand and uh, smiling to the camera. Let, let, let's see what it comes up with. Right. Uh, let me do a product, a small souvenir statute uh, in his hand. Well, fine. Um, there is a mistake. So essentially what I'm trying to show here using two different Loras on one image. So it could be imagine, a, you know, yourself or a CEO promoting a specific product. So instead of himself actually going and doing that, you can create a Laura of his face and a Laura of the product and combine those two together. So actually see what the result is going to be. I'll be honest with you, the result is not always great. And just because we've got the two Lauras here, they're sort of competing one against another. And we might at one point get my face and 
get the product or we might get the product and off my face but sometimes it actually generates both of them uh, pretty well so let's actually see it generates uh, longer than i expected all right i actually had to reset it stuck for whatever reason so we'll do it again so we go 1.1 on these ones and then we go 50 inference steps what is important if you're using two loras of course that you are using two keywords and as you can see here um we've got my face i'm actually a bit fatter <laughs> than that i always used to and i'm holding the statue is actually a, a little bit bigger than it actually is um on this image unfortunately but uh well, uh, here we are. And um, the, the quality, as you can see, for example, that the face is sort of okay. But if you look at the ring, for example, there is definitely something off with the ring. Well, they, they kind of t-shirt, there is sort of logo something or, or whatever. But I mean, it's sort of professional environment. There is like, you know, laptops and stuff. There is myself holding this thing. So if, I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying you should do, but like, think about you can generate um take photos of any person and generate any person with your product do not quote me on this but i mean that's that's possible right now right so you can have somebody's face train on and actually do something with your product so that's another cool feature that you can potentially use and the last thing that i wanted to show you is you can literally create a video like a short reel with your product so i've done a couple of pictures with my products and let me actually show you these pictures so um i'll go to pro trainer and i'm gonna choose my product and i'll show you what what other pictures i've made used for this so let me actually see so we get something like this picture looks really nice we got something like this right so it looks quite realistic i mean there's definitely wrong name but the general picture is looking really nice and what we're going to do next is we're going to download those pictures so we're going to download those pictures and we are going to use link so if you go to explore and you can find image to video models and there are plenty of different models that you can go through and i was uh, using the newest model is uh, clean version 1.6 that actually used the footage of sora it's a ready model so you don't need to find you actually can find you in a model in your pictures but uh but that's not what we're gonna do now so i'm gonna use one of the pictures that we have just having here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my chat GPT and I'll upload the same picture here and I'll ask it to generate me a prompt for a short product video, video of five seconds oh, based on this picture. I think it will understand it. So it has close up the elegant statue, smooth pan across the intricate details, pull back, whatever. Let's just use it and see what we get. OK, so they're actually longer prompt. Let's see if that works out. So here we can uh, select the duration basically from 5 to 10 seconds and the aspect ratio if i go with 10 seconds going to be much longer to generate this one will take us six minutes to generate so let's wait and see uh, what we get all right so the process has been finished and let's actually take a look so we get a slow motion video of this product which would be nice as a kind of for a real showcasing the product if we create uh more of these photos and animate those photos with videos of our product we can create kind of a short reel and let me show you uh, what i actually got So to recap, we explored how the Flux One Pro model can be fine-tuned to create stunning unlimited photos of your product. Then we combine those images with Kling AI to create a professional looking video reel, all without expensive equipment or hours of editing. If this video inspired you to try AI tools for your content creation, make sure to give it the thumbs up. It really helps the channel grow. And don't forget to subscribe for more exciting use cases of AI tools for business and personal life. Before you go, do you think AI generated footage is good enough for social media? Comment below, I want to see what you think. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.